my grandmother was right, the boogeyman was real. It's over. No one told you. Told me what? Michael Myers is alive. He has been bleeding out for like two hours. He is not alive. You know, I actually like how they got the mask right in the flashback. Something that no other Halloween movie tried to do, it seems. Why does he drop his guard? He not only didn't clear the whole house, but he just looked at the footprints on the ground. We're nothing exciting ever. Oh! One of the main reasons this flashback scene is good is because it accurately depicts Michael. One thing the Halloween sequels do aside from making Michael a cliche is making him an experienced killer. But one thing the original Halloween does well is make Michael out to be an inexperienced psychopath who escaped from a mental hospital. Throughout the first Halloween movie, Michael took a while to kill his victims. From the car, to the bedroom, to the kitchen, to even when he tried to kill Lori. He didn't cut off anyone's head with one slice. He didn't crush anyone's head. And when it comes to this timeline, he never just walked inside people's house and killed them like nothing without stalking them first. And yeah, maybe the kills get better with his experience. But in this timeline particularly, he's only killed five people and has been in a mental hospital for 40 years. So he should be lacking some experience. And if you want to say it's because he's pure evil, then okay. But still, the original Halloween was scarier. But not because of the kills. Because of how the movie sets the scary tone with him stalking them and then killing them one by one. But I like this flashback because it continues with the trend of Michael being an inexperienced psychopath because he doesn't just kill the cop with one slice. He chokes him out. This is a nice shot with the camera panning out for Michael, similar to how it was in the original when he first killed his sister. Yeah, can I get um, two of the voodoo skeleton thing? Hey, look here, don't be bored by the motherfucker or that man. Whoa, 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 you heard him from over here? Yo, the movie doesn't need this guy explaining this exposition if you were just going to have them introduce these characters in the next shot. And speaking of that, why is Nurse Chambers in this group? I mean, does she live in Haddonfield or did she just go searching for a group of people that survived Michael that night? Also, wouldn't it make more sense for them to celebrate surviving Halloween on November 1st instead of celebrating it on said night? Because it more symbolizes that they survived that night? I mean, what if he returns while you're celebrating on that night? Which he conveniently does. Shit, then you have to wait a whole another year to celebrate again. called the fire department doesn't lori live in like middle of nowhere my air supply has been compromised Half the oh, shit. I, I don't know what's more uglier about this scene michael actually surviving this so lori not thinking about the weapons door when trapping michael in here <laughs> How much? Excuse me. How much for the mask? She's not for sale. You have good day, sir. This Halloween. Dad, look out! Go! You got out once. You dip so much as a pinky back into this pond, you may find something reaching out to pull you back in. It's personal. Where did you get that mask? Why does it matter? It's not what you did. It's who you did it to. Who? The nobody? That nobody. It's Michael Myers.
we welcome y'all to the Brick Science Program. It's back for people who touch his stuff. Task your crew. How many? As many as you have. Michael Myers is... People keep asking if I'm back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. I ain't afraid of no Michael Myers. Uh-huh. How good's your laundry? No one's that good. I thought not. Out of all the ideas this movie takes from Halloween 2, they stay with Lori being in the hospital the whole time. Perfect. The only reason it's not going in the ugly category is because I guess this movie is more about the other characters that survived that night, even though they don't end up being that special either. So with that, the movie earns a 0 0.9 out of 1.0 for actors and acting. Is Michael trying to go home or is he trying to kill people? Pick one movie. And furthermore, why is he able to get into every house? Like nobody locks the door anymore. Tell me, look. Hey, turn it up. You're telling me none of the characters knew about Michael being transferred? <sighs> yeah, whatever. What? Baby, baby, baby. What? What? What's wrong? He's in the car. Whoa, is this movie really going to waste time with another inmate being in a car? Ugh, I hate this movie. Wait, what's going on over there? Whose fucking idea was it to put together a team of Nurse Chambers, the black guy nurse, the black woman doctor, and Lindsay? Like, what is their plan if they come in contact with Michael? Use their fucking thethoscope? Nobody here is equipped to use a gun. I've never fired a gun before. All right, so I don't even know why they gave you a gun. Uh. Hey! What are you guys doing out here? This scene is just ugly for a number of reasons. The fact that these kids are still outside, them not driving away, Lindsay taking so long with the bricks, the black woman taking so long to shoot Michael, to Lindsay stopping by a tree instead of still running, to this shit. <laughs> Secure a perimeter. Hospitals on lockdown. <sighs> this movie is ridiculous. Either the whole town is on high alert with Michael or not. You can't have it both ways. It doesn't make sense why most of the town is in a panic, and then there's still people who have no idea what's going on. Mommy, you Lord. can't go in there. Lord. Lord. Listen, I just want you to know, when he gets here, I'm going to fucking kill him. <sighs> You know, it really doesn't make sense why they would think he would be coming there for Lori. I mean, there's been no evidence that he's ever been after Lori. I mean, yeah, Lori said that herself, but she shouldn't even think that. I mean, if the events of Halloween 2 actually happened, then it would make more sense. But Michael appeared one night 40 years ago, so her thinking he would be after her is kinda premature. Someone's in our house, and it's not a child. You know, if the cops didn't want to send anyone over to the Myers house, then okay, whatever. But why the hell didn't they call the cops after clearly seeing a bloody handprint? Again, movie, you can't make it seem like most of the town knows about Michael's rampage and then have other people who are completely oblivious. It's Michael. Michael! Michael! <laughs> Aside from the movie wasting time on this bullshit, I'm guessing nobody knows how Michael actually looks, huh? Or how he's actually dressed, huh? <laughs> the one and probably only good thing about this movie are the kills and the visuals and the stunts. The visuals and the stunts look just as good if not better than the last movie as the kills look good throughout the film. So with that, the movie earns a 0 0.5 out of 0 0.5 for visuals and stunts. Evil. 
Wait, you're telling me Loomis was about to kill Michael and Hawkins stopped him? Wait, why the fuck was Hawkins the final say? Especially if everyone else seemed to be on board with this plan. Isn't Hawkins a rookie? He's going home. He went from Lori's compound mm -hmm. to victims in her neighborhood. Basically an arrow pointing straight to Lampkin Lane, Michael's childhood home. Okay, so one of the only good things about the plot and the story is that Michael was trying to go home the whole time. And that's definitely better than him just being after Lori for some unknown reason. I mean, it made sense in the original because it was just one night, but not quite 40 years later. Okay, so the key is we stick together. Now I'm going in alone. Why even fucking bring them? Secondly, why aren't you calling for backup? Michael has killed a group of firefighters John Wick style. What the fuck? Stupid stuff like this make the horror in this movie mediocre and pretty much worthy of the bad category. Aside from the pointless jump scares in the beginning of the movie, most of the scary elements in the movie are downgraded by the stupid decisions displayed in the film. But in the end, the score does help with the horror a bit. So with that, the movie earns a 0 0.3 out of 0 0.5 for horror. <laughs> Huh, too bad they also didn't call for backup before going in the house. But conveniently, Hawkins realized Michael likes to go home, which is how they figured to come here. Huh, just imagine, if Karen would have stabbed his fucking head, this could have ended early. Wait a minute. Barry Barnes Man, I had a whole case with Mars about an hour ago. Let's go, Tommy. Now listen, boys, there's strength in numbers. Yeah, strength in numbers. He will die tonight. Yeah, son of a bitch. I heard he killed a bunch of fighter fighters at once. Yeah, I heard Laura stabbed him multiple times, and he just took it like the devil. Hey guys, um, question. I have a, I have a problem. Uh, well, more of a, more of a concern. Evil really. dies tonight. Isn't Michael like the literal boogeyman and like pure evil or some sh? Tommy, why, why are we gonna beat him to death? Well, shouldn't we just have like a shotgun or something? Shouldn't we all have guns or something? Rip his mask off, look him in the eye. Swing on Huckleberry here. It's a night night. Night-night. Okay... He will die tonight! Look, I'm, I just feel I'll be more comfortable if everybody had he a gun. Who f keep saying that? Look, I just feel it would be better to just shoot him instead of, you know, beating him to death because, you know, he is the little boogeyman, you know? Guys? No? It's Halloween. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. What? Evil dies tonight! Well, okay, uh, you know what? I'll just stay out of this one. It's it's cool. Uh, I'll I'll join the next one. It's it's the vibe for me isn't you know there. It's you know everybody isn't. Yeah, it, it's cool. Don't even worry about it. It's cool. Uh, good luck though. He will die tonight. <laughs> He should not have survived this. Everything about this is just ugly. And when it comes to the directing by David Gordon Green, it's not bad or ugly, but it's not good as the last movie either. David continues to incorporate as many shots as possible from the original and Halloween 2, but it doesn't end up being that special. 
So with that, the movie earns a 0.7 out of 1.0 for directing. I don't know what's more uglier about this scene. Karen going back upstairs for no reason, or Michael sneaking back into the house while the police and the ambulance is there, and nobody else being in the house. And when it comes to the plot and the story, it ends up being in the bad category. Aside from it being below average due to Lori being in the hospital all of the movie and the other characters making stupid decisions, the plot and the story makes it pretty easy for Michael to survive this night, thanks to the plot conveniences. The only real good thing about this movie is the fact that Michael was trying to go home instead of going after Lori. So with that, the movie earns a 0.4 out of 1.0 plot and story. Okay, so when it comes to the editing of the movie, there was no problem, so that remained a 0.3 out of 0.3. And when it comes to the score, it ends up being good in the movie. The Halloween theme that's displayed throughout the film is just as good, if not better, than the original film. And it's incorporated well in the movie. And overall, it's worthy of a point in the good category. So with that, the movie earns a 0.2 out of 0.2 for score. Okay, so now that we have all the numbers for the grade, let's add them up. So the movie ends up with a 3.3 out of 4.5, and that gives it a B-plus rating. In conclusion, there's more bad and ugly than good in Halloween Kills, as the final bad total for the movie will be 13. And with the bad meter taking control, that brings the total percentage of the bad in the movie to 42%. And now that we have all the numbers, it's time for the movie to see its report card. <laughs> Evil dies tonight! <laughs>